Mesozoic, about 150 million years ago, our planet looked very different. Dinosaurs walked the Earth, and in our skies, flying reptiles flew. The oceans teemed with marine reptiles. And our closest living relatives at that time were small, rodent-sized mammals that lived in the shadow of the dinosaurs. And then, 65 million years ago, a major catastrophe fell on Earth. It was so colossal that 75% of all life that existed went extinct. Of all the dinosaurs that lived on the planet, only the birds survived. Of all the rest, only their bones and teeth remained. When we look at the bones of the dinosaurs, we're able to study them and we're able to reconstruct how these animals once looked. But if we want to understand more about the biology of these animals, we have to look inside their bones. And to do this, we have a section of the dinosaur bones. And inside those bones, we're able to remove a section of the bone and grind it very, very thin so that we can look at it under the microscope. And this is what we may see. Here we have a section of a 190 million year old dinosaur. The large black blotches that you see are the places where blood vessels course through the bone. The tiny specks of black that you see, those are where the bone cells once lived when the dinosaur was alive. This amazing colors that you see are the natural coloration of the bone. And they give us information about the structural organization of the bone. They tell us how fast or how slow this bone actually formed. The microscopic structure of dinosaur bone can even tell us about the health of a dinosaur. Here we have an example of a dinosaur from Romania that has unusual, weird growth patterns, as you can see by those two arrows in the picture. From the surface of the bone, they have these radial growths that are projecting outwards, and from the inside of the bone, there are unusual bony growths. And when we saw this, we wondered, what could have caused this kind of disease? And then, we discovered that in a modern bird that was infected with osteopetrosis, the same kind of features occur. And this led us to deduce that it's quite likely that the dinosaur was probably infected with a similar kind of virus that caused these effects. Sometimes we find absolutely weird bone. We can look at this bone and we realize immediately there's something going on here. In this case, it's a dinosaur from Argentina, a large titanosaur. We see the abnormality, but we have absolutely no idea what caused this pathology. When we look at dinosaur bones, in many cases, we find that they form bone with growth rings in them. And just like in trees, you can count the number of rings and you can get the age of the animal. And years ago, when I was a PhD student in the long distant past, I worked on two Southern African dinosaurs. And I looked at many different individuals, different size individuals, and I counted the number of growth rings in their bones and I developed the very first growth curves of dinosaurs in the world. Since then, this methodology has been refined and applied to many other dinosaurs. And today, we have information about how long it took for different dinosaurs to grow up. For example, we know that T. rex 
took 19 years to grow to its adult body size of 12 meters and 9 tons. But the T-Rex is really quite puny compared to the real giants of the Mesozoic, the sauropod dinosaurs. How did these guys get so big? When we looked at the bones of the sauropods and their earlier relatives, we were astounded because it was quite clear that different dinosaurs amongst this family of dinosaurs grew in different ways. It was clearly not a case of one size fits all. The more we work on these dinosaurs, the more we are astounded by the plasticity and the growth patterns that emerge from this group. Besides the large dinosaurs, there were also dinosaurs that flew, and these are the Mesozoic birds. What can bone microstructure tell us about these birds? When we compare the bone microstructure of modern birds to the Mesozoic birds, we realize that the Mesozoic birds grew like their dinosaurian relatives. They took a long time to grow to adult body size, whereas modern birds grow quickly and rapidly to an adult body size. So that was certainly an interesting finding. And it, when we study more of these birds, it tells us about how the evolution of the modern growth patterns occurred. I've been enormously fortunate to be able to study this particular bird called Confucius Ornus Sanctus from China. It's one of the best represented birds. It's known by over a thousand specimens. Some of them have long ornamental tail feathers, and some of them have none. And our work on the bone microscopic structure of these birds told us that the bird without the long tail feathers are females. And we knew this because inside their bones, there was a very special bone tissue that showed us a tissue that we only find in modern birds that are ovulating. So now we have a really cool way of identifying male or female birds. At the end of the Cretaceous, 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs went extinct, many of the Mesozoic birds also went extinct. But clearly, some of them survived. Because today, we have 10,000 species of modern birds. When we look at a slide like this, we realize the diversity of birds. But one of the things that is quite striking is that Despite having survived the apocalypse at the end of the Cretaceous, many birds have gone extinct in the last few hundred years. For example, the elephant bird, which is the largest bird to have ever lived, in, and it's known from Madagascar, and the dodo are the two birds that went extinct in just the last few hundred years. And their extinction was not caused by a natural phenomena like an asteroid impact or volcanism, but rather because of human activity. It is quite disturbing to realize that it is not only these birds that have gone extinct. According to BirdLife International, nearly half of all the world's birds are declining rapidly. One in eight bird species are threatened with extinction. But it's not just the birds. Our world's biodiversity is in crisis. Many biologists, like myself, are of the opinion that the rate 
of extinction of species today is as colossal as the extinctions that have occurred in the distant past. And we think that Earth's sixth mass extinction event is happening now. Habitat loss, global climate change, population growth, urbanization, all these things are what's causing our planet to be in a crisis. The alarm bells are sounding. The red flags are up. We need to heed the call to do something. Because the fate of our planet is in our hands. We know what to do. We know that we need to take better care of our planet. It is about the sustainable use of the environment. It's about changing our attitudes and our behaviors. It's about increasing environmental protection. We know what to do. It's about doing it that's important. I'm assured that given the 3.5 billion year record on Earth, I know that some kind of life form will survive the impact of the cataclysm caused by humans. The question is whether humans will be there to see this. Thank you.